Hi, my name is Justin Silpe. I'm a graduate student in the Bastor Lab at Princeton, and I just wanted to thank you for inviting me here today and allowing me to share some of my thesis research with you. So the Bastor Lab studies quorum sensing, which is the process by which bacteria produce, detect, and respond to small chemical signaling molecules called autoinducers, which are depicted as these red triangles here. And they use these autoinducers to distinguish when they're alone from when they're in a group and to adjust their gene expression accordingly. When bacteria are at low cell density, the autoinducers that they produce diffuse away, so they can't detect them. And that signals to the bacteria to turn on genes involved in individual behaviors. As the bacteria multiply, these autoinducers accumulate, ultimately to the point that they bind to their corresponding receptors encoded by these bacteria, signaling to the bacteria to begin to turn on genes involved in group behaviors. I studied the model human pathogen Vibrio cholera, which has multiple quorum sensing circuits. The pathway I focus on is centered around a receptor and transcription factor called VQMA. Now, when I joined the Bassler Lab, my first task was to identify the autoinducer that activates VQMA. Well, I'm showing you that molecule, the molecule we discovered here, and we called it DPO. And just like other quorum sensing autoinducers, the bacteria produce DPO, and it accumulates when the bacteria reach high cell density. VQMA binds to DPO, and in cholera, that leads to a shutdown in genes involved in biofilm formation and virulence factor production, which are key to cholera's success as a human pathogen. During pathogenesis, these traits enable cholera to decide whether or not to stay in an individual and get that person sick by making virulence factors, versus when it's time to escape that individual so that it can infect other individuals and restart the cycle. Now, this is a completely new molecule to biology, and VQMA is a brand new quorum sensing receptor. So I wanted to understand the biological significance of these findings more generally. What I found is that many bacteria seem capable of making DPO. And yet the only ones that seem to be able to respond to DPO, that is the only bacteria I could find that encode VQMA-like genes, are members of this genus, the Vibrios. But that's when I found another VQMA. The trick was this other VQMA, it wasn't in a bacterial database. It was in a viral database. And specifically, it was on a phage. So phages are viruses that infect bacteria, and I'm showing part of this phage's genome here. On the left, you can see where I found phage VQMA, and on the right are basic phage biology components that I uncovered through the course of my work. Let me tell you about these components first. Well, this phage is the type of phage that when it infects a cell, it immediately has to choose whether or not to stay within that cell in a process called lysogeny, or whether or not to break out of that cell to lyse it in order to infect others. And in this phage, that decision is determined by the status of a single repressor protein called the C1 repressor. And the function of this C1 repressor, much like prototypical members of this phage, or this group of phages, uh, is to repress the genes encoding the lytic functions. In this particular phage, the C1 repressor represses the expression of a gene called Q. And Q, if it gets made, is an activator of the lytic genes. OK, well, what else do we know about phages? When times get tough for the host, that signals to the phage that it's time to make its escape. Commonly, the mechanism by which phages do this is through a host-mediated SOS response pathway that leads to the cleavage of the repressor protein. And with the repressor cleaved, it stops working. So Q gets made, and lytic genes get turned on. And that's exactly what I found to be true for this phage as well. OK, so that made perfect sense to me. And now I can kind of completely dispense with this part of the genome. But of course, my real question here is what's going on on this part of the genome? Quorum sensing is supposed to be about bacteria. And here I'm showing you a quorum sensing receptor encoded by a phage. Not only that, but it's the quorum sensing receptor I study, VQMA. And so to get at this question of what it's doing, I took one of the things I figured out from the first part of my project, which was that in cholera, VQMA is activated by DPO. And I asked, what happens in cells harboring this phage with phage VQMA expressed in the presence or absence of DPO? As you can see from this growth curve here, the cells grow just fine in the absence of DPO. However, when I add in synthetically produced DPO, the culture died. This showed me that phage VQMA binds to DPO and somehow activates lysis. And it suggested that this phage waits for its host to get to high cell density when it's producing DPO in order to kill it. OK, so now I have a phage that's using, through phage VQMA, eavesdropping on its host ability to make its signal molecules. And I needed to connect that to the basic phage biology components. Well, these are all the phage components I know about. 
And in one model, I thought perhaps phage VQMA simply direct, directly activates the lytic genes. The answer is it didn't. Then I thought maybe phage VQMA just directly activates Q because Q is that activator of lysis. It didn't. Going one up, I thought maybe phage VQMA represses C1, which would lead to the derepression of Q, and that would drive lysis. Again, it didn't. And at this point, I'm out of additional components to test. And that told me that I was missing something. Well, in order to find that missing link, I devised a screen. And I re-engineered the phage components so that instead of lysing their host as a function of Q, they produce light. And in a reporter strain containing just these components, all of the cells are dark. And that's because, remember, the function of C1 is to repress Q. In this particular reporter line, they're making light instead of Q. And because C1 is around, no light get, gets made. Now, I reasoned that if I introduce into this strain a library containing random fragments of this phage's DNA, that one of them should contain the missing link that phage VQMA activates. And in a cell with that link, phage VQMA will bind to DPO, activate expression of that missing link, and that missing link, when it gets made, will complete the circuit. So C1 will be regulated, leading to the derepression of Q. And again, in this particular reporter line, means that the colonies will be bright. And that's exactly what I found. I found one colony that did this. And when I trace back where on the phage genome that fragment was located, it turns out it was located immediately upstream of phage VQMA. And on that fragment, there was exactly one ORF, encoding a 79 amino acid protein, having no homology to anything else out there in the protein database. And so I gave it my own name, and I called it Q-tip, for quorum-triggered inactivator of C1 protein. So now I have this totally new, really small, completely uncharacterized protein, and I'm telling you, it's somehow linking quorum sensing, something that bacteria were only thought to be able to do, to a phage-mediated lytic program. And so it was also my task to figure out how it's working. Let me show you what I found out. So I tagged the C1 repressor with a tag that enabled me to visualize it under the microscope. And as you can see, when expressed alone, the C1 repressor is diffuse within the cytoplasm. However, if I co-express Q-tip in these cells, Q-tip sequesters C1, which you can see as these aggregates, or these foci, forming at the cell poles. Now importantly, in an experiment I'm not showing, I tried to express Q in these cells. And remember that C1, the protein, represses the expression of Q. So if you try to express Q in these cells, no Q gets made. However, I found that in the condition where I, where I express Q-tip as well, Q does get made. And so what that tells me is that Q-tip blocks C1's ability to repress Q. OK, so what have I told you so far? Well, there are two inputs that control the lysis lysogeny decision in this phage. The first one is the classic one. It's DNA damage. That leads to the cleavage of the repressor protein. And with the repressor cleaved, Q gets made, and the lytic genes get turned on. The second input is this totally new one. It's quorum sensing. This phage encodes its own quorum sensing receptor that binds to an autoinducer its host makes when they reach high cell density. And when that happens, it leads to the expression of this new phage protein, Q-tip, which directly binds to and sequesters the C1 repressor. Now, mechanistically, sequestration is obviously different than cleavage. However, the outcome for both the phage and the host winds up being exactly the same. The C1 protein stops working, so Q gets made, lytic genes get turned on, the host dies, and the virus spreads. I'd like to finish by returning to where we think this is actually taking place. And so I told you at the beginning of the talk that cholera makes and detects its own DPO, and it's doing this as a part of its own counting process. Specifically, we think it's doing it when it's within the human host, and it's using the DPO concentration to decide whether or not to stay within its host or whether or not to disperse from its host. I also mentioned that DPO is produced widely. That extends to members of the human microbiome. And so we think from the human perspective, our perspective, having our commensal bacteria could be a benefit or a defense mechanism for us. Because in the event that cholera comes, we come into contact with cholera, the DPO produced by our commensal bacteria could trick incoming cholera to overestimate it in its numbers. And specifically, when DPO is around, that causes cholera to overestimate its numbers and trick it into prematurely dispersing. And so from our perspective, this could minimize the disease. Well, what I just told you is that there's a phage out there that's joined the conversation. And we think it's doing much the same thing as its host, cholera. You'll remember that cholera infects humans, and this phage infects cholera. And just like cholera uses DPO to decide when to stay and when to leave within its host, us, 
This phage uses the information encoded by DPO to decide whether or not to lysogenize its host or to lyse its host. And so with that, I would like to thank all the members of my lab, uh, funding, uh, Princeton, and then also collaborators uh, and former members who helped me significantly in this project. And then I'd like to thank you for your time, and I'd be happy to try to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you.